So we're out here today on this lovely autumn morning in Coedgath Gach. It's an RSPB reserve uh, at the northern slopes of the Maldach Estuary. We're currently stood just above the woodland edge on an area of free habitat. The reserve largely falls within the boundaries of the Merionid Oakwoods and Batsite Sack and is a good example of the Celtic rainforest habitat. We'll be taking you on a mini tour through the woodland here at Coed Gardgech and the nearby National Trust owned woodland at Ganchwyd, Coed Domalunchin. We'll discuss the different aspects of conservation grazing that have been introduced to these sites, either through the Life Celtic Rainforest Wales project or previously. This area of woodland at Coedgath Gech is one which has yet to be grazed by the Highland cattle and is a good example of what you'd expect to find in a woodland where grazing is needed. The understory and ground layer are dominated by dense bramble and bracken which hinders the development of a diverse ground flora including natural region. In addition, it can shade many of the surfaces on which low plant communities thrive such as the bark of the mature trees further impacting on the conservation value of the woodlands. This woodland, Dolmolunchin, Ganchwyd, which we'll visit again later in the video, has had grazing on it for some years now, and is a good example of what we wish to achieve. It retains a fairly open canopy, which are those currently fairly even aged, possibly as a result of previous management, show signs of recovery with healthy amounts of natural regen and a varied age structure in the lower canopy. The ground layer retains a small amount of bramble and bracken, but the grazing has largely suppressed these such that they no longer pose a threat to flowering plants and saplings, nor do they shade the rocky surfaces and tree bark, which often provides the best substrate for lower plant communities. Okay, so what we're looking at here is a decent sort of stepping stone, a halfway point. So we've got the nice mature sessile oaks, um, they've got room for the canopy going up above them. There is a little bit too much regeneration underneath. There's a little bit too much holly, a little bit too much bramble and bracken. Most of that should be looked after with the cattle. Because um, what we're aiming for again is a nice open woodland with lots of air and lots of light. So this section of the woodland at Coedgathgeth is currently not grazed under glass deer rules um, but what we've done is, with an eye to the future, install the new infrastructure while we have funding so that we can go ahead and graze that if and when that becomes appropriate and the benefit of our project being able to invest like this is to restore things like this traditional stone walling so we're using local craftsmen, local employers and hopefully this will be still be standing for hundreds of years now. When we're grazing a site with public access, it's important to have livestock that are fairly chilled and won't be spooked by visitors or frighten them. Signage is essential to inform people that there are livestock on site and explain why they're there for wildlife and habitat benefit and how to behave around them. We need to make sure people don't feed the animals and that dogs are kept on leads and less threatened. Pont has held events for local walkers on some sites to explain how to behave, which can be really helpful. So on some sites where we need to have a stockproof external boundary, we will use standard stock netting and possibly barbed wire. However, on internal divisions, we want to not act as a barrier for wildlife, so we've chosen plain high tensile wire here. It allows wildlife free access but enables us to manage the cattle within the site. A lot of our time goes into finding the right contractors. Um, most of our sites are very inaccessible. We're looking for people with the skills and who are happy to come and carry lots of fence posts onto some very inaccessible sites and working on some very steep ground, some very rocky ground. And it's, it's not the usual job that these guys would normally be doing. Um, it's also really important to keep in touch with them. So here you can see we've decided to move a gate because we uncovered an existing gap in the stone wall. I feel it's also really important that contractors can come to us and say if there's a problem, if they don't quite understand what we're asking them to do, 
Um, Because in some cases we're learning, we're both learning as we go along. And you can appreciate some of the skill needed and determination um, to be able to restore walls across water and through bogs and up hills. And I think it's very much worth the effort. This is fairly typical of a lot of the sites we're working on in the project. So you can see there's plenty of trees, there's a lot of undergrowth, so we've got lots of bramble, um, usually some bracken in open areas, lots of smaller trees regenerating, and you can see that there's not much light getting through to the trees and there is no light getting through to any ground flora at all. This is what all of the investment is about. So we've reintroduced large herbivore grazing to Coedgathgeth, and in this particular compartment, these two have been here for about three or four days when we took this video. Um, they've previously been on another site nearby. Now Highland cattle have proven themselves to be really good at this job. They're small and quite easy to handle. They thrive on eating the brambles that you can see here and they browse as well. So they take ivy and they take some of the very small saplings and they actually have a habit of pushing over some saplings as well, which makes the structure of the wood a lot more interesting. And these two, we've got Deru, who is the black one on the left, and Katie is the red one on the right. And Deru's just demonstrating as well how they will happily push through areas of bramble and undergrowth, start making some tracks through and start opening up the ground layer to let light through to the, to the soil underneath. One of the challenges of conservation grazing in general is that we usually use quite low numbers and low densities of animals. So we could have know, four animals over 10 or so hectares. And one of the costs associated with this is the amount of time it takes for the livestock keeper to come and check on them every day. So what we have and what you might see on Deru here is a GPS collar and this connects by mobile phone signal to an app which enables the grazier or myself to look up where the animal is and where they've been in the last 24 hours and it can also be set to send an alert in the case of any potential escape. So any sort of new technology we can trial to show that this is you know, a pattern of grazing that can be sustained into the future is one of the outcomes of the project we want to promote. It's really good to see the cattle here now. You can see how they're moving through the woodland, trampling bracken, making paths and browsing the bramble and the regen, which improves the airflow through the wood to benefit the lichens and open it out for birds such as the pied flycatcher. The results they achieve will be monitored in terms of vegetation structure and diversity, and then they'll be moved onto the next compartment once we're happy with this one. It's a continual process of assessment and tweaking management throughout the coming years. You can see Deru's GPS collar a lot more clearly from this angle. And as you can see, he's not bothered by it at all. We do go in and make sure that the strap isn't rubbing and that it's fitting well and that it won't get snagged on any trees as he's wandering around. So this is our phoenix tree and in the storms last winter it was blown over just after we'd repaired the stone walling next to it. Um, so our warden was able to kind of cut the path through whilst keeping it safe and you can see the limbs there are supporting the weight of the tree. And there's enough of the root plate left attached for it to carry on and grow. So all we did really was rebuild the wall, pop some fence in and then fill in the gap underneath where the roots have come up so that people and animals can't fall down and get hurt and hopefully it will keep growing for hundreds more years. So this area of Coedgathgeth is also really really valuable habitat and you can see behind us the woodland edge sort of comes into this wetland area and we know that edgeland habitats are really important for various species of bird and other wildlife on site but we found that when we're talking about support for land management. Woodland is often treated as its own separate entity and it's not incorporated into the, the wider landscape. 
Could you tell us a bit more? Well, under single farm payment rules, the, there is no payment for woodland. But actually, as you're saying, Helen, it, it's part of the farm and part of the natural environment and grazing in woodlands can be really a really important management tool. So if in future environmental schemes, um, as they replace single farm payment, they could include management of woodlands by grazing and using livestock, that would just be amazing. It would really improve the future for funding work in woodlands. This area of wet heath with millennia, purple moorgrass, heather and bilberry is great for butterflies and a host of other wildlife. The woodland edge around it provides valuable habitat for a wide range of birds, reptiles and insects, as well as dormice. Transition habitats such as this have a greater number of species and a density of species than the habitats on either side. The cattle will help to manage the edge by creating good vegetation structure and they'll also be browsing millennia between late April and August. It's most nutritious then, but it will still be eaten into the winter. They'll break up the millennia thatch as they walk around the area and leave a diverse sward for flowers and access for other species. It's important to remember that grazing and browsing isn't the only impact that the cattle have. So here we can see some of the dung they've left behind. Um, this is the start of a food web for lots of invertebrates and birds and small mammals as well. And you can also see the impact they've had on the bracken and the small trees just around us. Now this area of freeze land is in itself a valuable habitat. So it's where the edge of the woodland gradually feathers into this upland heathery area. And what we'd be looking for here over the next few years is much more heather being visible Still some trees, you know, this is Freeth, and then a vast reduction in the amount of bracken on the ground. And so far, so good. Around a thousand beetle species can be found in the woodland, breeding in decaying wood and feeding on sap, leaves and each other. Cattle dung can support up to 250 different types of invertebrate, including dung beetles which feed, breed and hunt in and below the cowpats, providing food for a host of creatures further up the food chain. It's important to make sure the cattle are not treated with ivermectin wormers before or during their grazing on conservation sites. So we've moved slightly uh, down slope of where we were up on the heath a little earlier now and we're moving into the, um, the woodland itself. This is a woodland where we've had grazing now for about six months uh, and as you can see uh, compared to some of the other examples um, where we haven't had grazing there's a distinct lack of bramble uh, on the ground layer here. Um, if you'd have been here a few months ago it was a lot more dense so it does show the, the impact the cattle have or have had um, and what we would envisage seeing uh, over the next season or two is uh, a more diverse ground flora coming back um, and then in a longer period uh, more regen coming through compared to those areas where grazing hasn't been undertaken. This area has a bit of a head start when it comes to the grazing so previous management has included some chainsaw work to thin the trees there's been a substantial amount of work with brush cutters and streamers to knock back the bramble and the bracken and the undergrowth. So it's, it's getting a lot closer to what we're aiming for. Interestingly, if you look to the right of the screen, you'll see the ivy has been stripped from that tree trunk. And that's about the height the Highland cattle can reach. So they've been in here about a year and they've eaten the regeneration of the bramble. Like I say, they've stripped some of the ivy. They've kept the grass short on the paths. And hopefully this means that we won't need to use machinery in here often, if at all. And if you think about the savings in fossil fuel and time of the wardens and travel time of the wardens to here, I think that's a, a very good situation to be in. We're now at Coed Dolmolunchen, Ganchwyd, some four miles northeast of Coed Garth Gech, where we were earlier. 
The site has been in the ownership of the National Trust since 1936, having previously formed part of the Dolmelunkin estate. The woodland is classified as ancient woodland, having been under continuous forestry cover since at least 1600, and is split in two by the Avon Gamlan, one of the most important ravines in Western Europe for oceanic bryophytes. Similar to an earlier scene in the video, this clip of the woodland at Dolmelunkin provides a good example of what we want to achieve in some of the woodlands through introduced grazing. The highlands help keep levels of bramble and bracken down, allowing for a much more diverse ground flora to develop and regen to thrive. Although not the best time of year to capture flowering plants, we would expect species such as bluebells, primrose, wood sorrel and violets to be present in the spring and summer months alongside the diversity of lower plants and native saplings which you can see in the scene. Some of the species of lichens that we find in Celtic rainforests are globally rare. Here we have Loberia pulmonaria or tree lungwort and a stick to lichen. These, along with some other mainly leafy looking lichens, are referred to as a Liberian lichen community. It's these lichen communities that help to make Celtic rainforest habitats of international importance. This tree lungwort is a particularly striking example given its large green leafy structure. All lichens are in fact two organisms, an alga and a fungi. The alga need light to photosynthesize, which is why we aim to manage our woodlands to ensure the open structure we have mentioned previously. Each species of lichen also needs their own perfect level of humidity in order to thrive. Our high rainfall, steep rocky gorges and a closed canopy combine to create these humid conditions. And so to summarise, by looking to replicate what would historically be a natural occurrence, sustainable grazing can be a highly valued conservation tool. It can be used to manage levels of more undesirable species in the low canopy and ground layers of native woodlands, in doing so allowing for much greater diversity of flowering plants, lower plants and tree saplings to thrive.